Hello everybody, my name is Steven with Daz and today we're going to be talking about animating your Daz 3D characters in Cascader. If you haven't heard of Cascader before, it is a pre-release software. Really over tens of thousands of users flock into this software. It was initially created by a game studio to use internally and they've decided to let it go public. It has a lot of cool features. It's very intuitive, responsive, and I think a lot of DAZ users will enjoy the functionality of being able to create really realistic animations and poses with Cascader. So today we're gonna talk about taking your DAZ character and importing it into Cascader, getting it configured, and everything you need to know to be set up to start working with your DAZ character in Cascader. For those of you who are new to Daz, we won't be able to cover everything about designing a character here. Please check out some of our other video tutorials to learn more about that. But once you have a character created like this one here, and this is an awesome the Genesis 8 base character, when you have your character set up, uh, what you need to do is come over to File and Export. So we are exporting a FBX file. Now I've already done this, so I'm just gonna choose here and I'll say yes, obviously, just because I've already created it before, but I just wanna show you uh, the settings here. So when you go to export and you choose the location, you have the export options. There's a list of options here and then down below, it kind of gives you an overview of what's happening. So a few things that I do wanna point out uh, you can see here in the info, the number of vertices polygons for each piece of this model. I've done a little bit of testing in Cascader and I haven't had any issues yet. However, the devs have come out and said that you might want to be careful with how many polygons are in your model. With Daz Studio, that can become an issue with some characters. As you start laying on lots of layers of hair and clothing and different props, your vert count could get pretty high. If you're worried about that, you could consider using something like maybe the selected option and then just leave out props and maybe some accessories that you don't want to export for the sake of the animation. Uh, that will help keep the vertice count lower. It's just to make sure that you don't have any stutters when uh, you're trying to create your animation in Cascader. That said, if you've got a pretty decent hardware that you're working on, uh, I don't think you'll have any problem because I do believe that when you're in the scene view, it does use the GPU to render the mesh. Uh, another thing I am going to check here is merge clothing into figure skeleton. You'll see when we get into Cascader and we're configuring the skeleton become the rig that we're going to use in Cascader. If you do have some clothes and things like that, all of those have their own skeletons and it can get a little overwhelming, a little confusing. So I'm going to check that. And then as far as the other defaults, locks and the options, and then uh, allow degraded skinning and allow degraded scaling, we've got to keep those checked. So I would go ahead and click accept. It's going to export that to where I told it to. And then from there, once that's done, we are ready to open up Cascader and get started. So I'll see you there. Let's go ahead and get started importing our Daz 3D character. So what we're going to do is click a new scene and that brings us into the main window here. So we're going to go to file, import FBX DAE. Now, another thing that you can do is go to the place where you saved your FBX file and you drag and drop it into the scene, or you can come to the file and then just select model. So what we want to do is with our uh, Genesis 8 female selected here, we need to click on rig mode and then we'll hit yes. And that brings us into uh, this section of Cascader where we have access to the rigging tools up here. So we can see the Genesis 8 female skeleton right here. So we need to configure this skeleton to the skeleton that Cascader uses in its animator controller. In order to do that, we wanna come over here and click Quick Rigging Tool. That's gonna open up uh, this dialog box here. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of slide my character over to the side because it will be useful being able to see the character. So as you can see over here under configuration, we have the skeleton for the Daz character. Over here, we have a pictorial view of the Cascader skeleton. 
And then here we have a breakdown of the actual bones. So you may notice the Cascader skeleton is not quite as in-depth as the DAS skeleton. And that's because they have programmed a lot of the movement functionality into how these bones work. So you actually don't need as many bones uh, to accomplish the same thing. We have to take the bones and move them and tell Cascader which bones correlate with which. So let's go ahead and start with the pelvis bone. Now, if I click on the Genesis bone, you'll see it highlighted here, the abdomen lower. I think that is exactly what we need. So you have two options. You can click and drag and just drop it in the circle here, and then you'll see it pre-fill there. Or if you prefer, you can just drag and drop it over here. All right, stomach. Well, let's go ahead and grab the abdomen upper for stomach. Let's go ahead and try chest upper. I feel like that, okay, neck. We could do, uh, let's go ahead and do neck lower. And then head, we're just going to use head. All right, let's move on to left arm. So clavicle left, that's kind of this shoulder bone right here. For that one, I am going to choose the collarbone. So we want to make sure L collar, since this is on the left, and I'm going to put that into the clavicle left. Next, after that, we have arm left. For this one, uh, you want to make sure that you use the bend, the shoulder bend, not the shoulder twist. Go ahead and drag that in for the arm. Then for the forearm, we're going to choose forearm bend. Again, make sure that you don't grab the twist. Drag that in. And then for hand, we can just take L hand and put it in right there. Now I'm going to skip right arm because we're just going to do the mirror tool to make this easy. So we'll go down to left leg, left thigh bend. Go ahead and grab that and put that in thigh left. Then for calf, we're going to do left shin. Okay, moving on. This one's easy. Left foot for foot left and left toe for toe left. Okay, so now all we need to do is mirror it and it will autofill in right arm and right leg. So to do that, we need to say what the original is written as. So it proceeds with an L. The mirrored that we're looking for starts with a lowercase r. So put lowercase l in original, lowercase r in mirrored, and then hit create mirror object. And as you can see, it automatically fills those in. Once you're done and you are uh, satisfied with the rig map, I highly recommend coming up to this menu here and clicking export. What that's gonna do is export this rig map uh, you can store it somewhere on your computer where you can find it later. So then the next time you're bringing a different Genesis character into Cascader, all you have to do is come up to import. You can import that map. It's automatically going to do this for you. Uh, so you don't have to keep doing this every time you want to bring a Genesis character into Cascader. Once you're satisfied, we can go ahead and click create prototypes rig. And as you can see, We'll go ahead and close this. Uh, a lot of stuff just happened to our character. We have these boxes, lines, and weird blue spheres. So there are three methods that Cascader uses to manipulate your mesh. And that is with these line controllers, box controllers, and uh, sphere controllers. They all uh, work in slightly different ways. And before we can get started, we are going to have to tweak this just a little bit. Um, there are a few issues in how the auto rigging tool set this up for our character. In order to do that, uh, we can just click on these various rigging methods. Let's start, for example, with um, this. So just a rule of thumb I found with these spheres here. See how it's protruding outside of the mesh? Well, that's going to make it difficult to use this uh, to manipulate the mesh. It's going to affect the mesh in interesting ways. So what we want to do is with that sphere collected, uh, come over to Object Properties 
and open the proto union behavior. There's a lot of settings in here and I recommend for the most part keeping all of these to their default. But what you can change here is the width of the rigid body. So that is going to make this smaller so it's not protruding outside of our mesh. So let's try and uh, cut it in half. I'll hit enter and we can see that it shrinks there. Um, let's make it a little bit, maybe a little bit bigger. There. I, I think that I like that. I think that um, is a much better size. Now what we might want to do is just pull it forward a little bit. And actually, let, let's go down just a bit more. Now I'm going to come over to this one, which is the abdomen lower. And what I would really like to do is bring that down a bit. As far as the size, I think it just needs to be a bit smaller. And we do have a problem of it protruding when we look at it front to back. Uh, so let's see if we can take the scaling tool And notice it is affecting everything that it's parented to. And I'm not sure if there's a way around that, but that's okay for now. We shouldn't have any issues there. Okay. Uh, once again, we're going to just mirror our work. So that way we don't have to do this twice on each side. And we don't have to remember the exact values that we chose when we were creating this rig. We want these spheres to be uh, almost connected so that there aren't large gaps in how the rig affects our mesh. Okay, I think that about does it for the uh, ellipsoids. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna work with are the box controllers, uh, which are these outline boxes here. For these, really what we wanna do is using the scale tool, we just want to size it down to about the edge of the mesh. And don't forget uh, to check the other axes as well. When you feel good about what you've done, you can go ahead and click and drag to select the rig. And then we're going to come down to mirror group. We're going to set the mirror plane to YZ. And then uh, notice it populated in here, original L, original R. So then we can click create mirror object. And we now have a full rig that is ready to go. Final step, generate rig and it will bring us into animation mode. And here is where we will be able to use the tools to start animating our character. Well, if you made it this far, I know this one was uh, a little difficult, a little tedious, but now that we have this out of the way, we will be able to dive into part two and get started with actually creating animations and poses for our Genesis 8 character. Uh, can't wait to show you how it works, and I will see you there. Thanks for tuning in.